The U.S. is in the midst of a reading crisis, and our nation can't afford to sugarcoat it. Things are bad, really bad. But a vast body of research called the science of reading can tell us how to fix it. According to the NAEP, the nation's report card, 66% of American fourth graders are failing to meet the proficiency level on the national reading assessment. That means that if the U.S. were an average-sized classroom of 25 students, about 17 children are below proficient. And these shockingly low early childhood literacy rates are not equally dispersed. About 82% of black fourth graders fall below proficiency. Meanwhile, childhood literacy is one of the most important predictors of future life outcomes. Children with below basic reading skills in third grade are six times as likely to fail finishing high school in time. And 70% of incarcerated adults are unable to read above a fourth grade level. But there's a silver lining. We know how to fix this one. In this video, we'll tell you what steps America must take as soon as possible to ensure that every child in every zip code has equitable access to the world through literacy. In 2013, the state of Mississippi ranked 49th out of 50 states in childhood literacy rates. But over the next decade, something astonishing happened. Mississippi's literacy rates skyrocketed from second worst all the way to 21st out of 50 states. The press labeled this event the Mississippi Miracle. That's what people are calling the dramatic shift in reading scores accomplished by the state of Mississippi. But this was no miracle. This was good policy and good reading science. Mississippi decided to let go of a very popular, well-marketed, but largely ineffective way to teach reading, replacing it with an approach that science of reading researchers have advocated for for decades. Let's talk about those two approaches. Chapter one, conflicting ideas about reading, meaning-based versus code-based. For many years, there have been two conflicting ideas about how children should be taught to read. The first, meaning-based approaches, are the methods Mississippi largely used up until 2013. Meaning-based approaches assume that reading skills are best acquired naturally, through context and immersion, much like when children begin to speak their native language. Meaning-based perspectives are sometimes called top-down because they encourage students to guess or predict the meaning of words based on context, pictures, and existing knowledge. Consider this example from the popular three-cueing approach to reading. Students are told to ask themselves three questions, or cues, before taking a guess at the correct word. Does it make sense? Does it sound right? Does it look right? and the children must then predict what the appropriate word might be. Widespread meaning-based approaches like three cueing, Marie Clay's balanced literacy, and whole language learning all operate on the same fundamental premise, that students should learn reading naturally, just like how they learned spoken language for the first time. Over the decades, meaning-based approaches spread across the country like wildfire, thanks largely to impressive marketing campaigns, emphasizing their ability to kindle a child's natural love of reading. But there is a major problem with meaning-based approaches. Children cannot learn to love reading if they are never properly taught how to read in the first place. Which brings us to the second idea about reading, the one Mississippi systematically adopted in 2013. Proponents of code-based approaches have long maintained that learning how to read is not at all like learning to speak. In the code-based view, the proper analogy for learning to read is more like learning how to play a new instrument. You've got to start with the basics, get the fundamentals down, and with time and practice, you'll play beautifully. Through code-based instruction, letter-sound relationships are taught explicitly. Structured literacy emphasizes the structure of language through phonology, sound symbol association, syllables, morphology, syntax, and semantics. Rather than a top-down game of prediction based on what a learner already knows, code-based methods are bottom-up. Start at the beginning and build up. Disagreements around these entrenched ideas about reading intensified over the decades, reaching a boiling point in the 80s and 90s when the dispute was finally given a name. 
The Reading Wars. The Reading Wars raged for decades, but it was only ever an ideological debate. The science was always clear. Chapter 2. What the Research Says. Today, that science is clearer than ever. Human brains are not wired to read and write, and meaning-based approaches do not work well for most students. Cognitive scientists agree that human brains process written language letter by letter, sound by sound, and the research shows that students perform much better when they are taught code-based approaches. Without code-based instruction, many students will continue to struggle, lost in a wilderness of letters and words. The science of reading has demonstrated that 95% of children have the ability to learn to read, but to do it effectively, up to 50% of those children require careful, systematic instruction. A structured literacy approach is a necessary foundation for reading success, consistent with code-based approaches. Structured literacy begins by helping children understand the building blocks of language, allowing the readers to master the structure of sentences. Structured literacy is systematic, it's cumulative, it's explicit, and it's diagnostic. Understanding how sounds come together to form words is the key to unlocking reading. When students have the key, they can explore a vast wilderness of words, books, and ideas. A whole new world of possibilities and opportunities. Chapter 3. How in the world did we get here? How did meaning-based approaches like whole language, balanced literacy, and 3 queuing come to dominate the American educational system? And how could we have gotten this so wrong for so long? There are four major reasons. First, powerful business incentives. Well-resourced publishing companies with strong marketing departments offered schools engaging books and resources and developed highly attractive sales strategies. While it isn't possible to know whether the authors and publishers of meaning-based methods knowingly promoted inaccurate reading methods, at best, they knew the scientific evidence was out there, and they avoided investigating it. Sadly, their negligence caused significant harm. Second, the science-public disconnect. Scientists have long understood the pedagogical superiority of code-based instruction, but they struggled to reach decision-makers. Meanwhile, the public was made to believe that the reading wars were a conflict between two legitimate sides, because they didn't see or know about the science. Third, institutional barriers. Thanks to a range of institutional barriers, even today, only 25% of teacher education programs include findings from the science of reading research and structured literacy instructional approaches. And fourth, the tree of trust. Parents, teachers, and even most administrators aren't to blame in this story. Parents relied on teacher expertise. Teachers understandably trusted their school districts. And districts deferred to extremely convincing publishers and authors. Chapter 4. The Science of Reading Revolution Thankfully, in recent years, a wave of change has swept across the nation. 30 states have made key legal changes, aiming to bridge the gap between the science and the classroom. Many have also begun banning meaning-based approaches like 3 queuing, But this is just the beginning. In order to provide access to the code for all children, districts must follow the example set by Mississippi. Specifically, districts must develop a multi-year literacy plan. This plan must adopt proven structured literacy programming, prioritize teacher training, empowering and arming teachers with knowledge and tools, Implement universal screening to identify reading challenges early. Create a tiered system of student support so that all children receive the resources they need. That is the answer. Play it back if you need to. It's simple to say in a video, but in the real world, it requires lots of advocacy, communication, and work. And that's where you come in. To learn more about bringing transformational literacy practices based on the science of reading to your state or district, visit mz.com, linked in the description below, and sign up for our mailing list. That's I-M-S-E dot com. Additionally, check out Emily Hanford's groundbreaking podcast about what happened to literacy in the U.S., or click on one of the New York Times articles, all linked below. At MZ, we believe all students can learn, 
and all teachers can learn to teach them. Together, we can solve the U.S. literacy crisis, ensuring that all children everywhere are given equitable access to the code to unlock literacy, opening doors to opportunities for the rest of their lives.